This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1989, Why Schedules and Routines Are Bad for My Mental Health, part one, by Ryan Ferguson of ryanferguson.co.uk, and I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Saturday, welcome to one of the only podcasts in the world where blogs are narrated to you for free with permission from the authors. It's an award-winning podcast, thanks to you. Now today I'm sharing a brand new author for the show. Stick around until after the reading to hear about Ryan. And it's a bit of a longer post, so I'll read the first half today and then finish the rest for you tomorrow. So with that, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Why Schedules and Routines Are Bad for My Mental Health, Part 1, by Ryan Ferguson of ryanferguson.co.uk. Let me take you inside the computer of somebody with obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD. I have access because the computer is mine. I'm the person who struggles with obsessive thoughts, rituals, and organizational patterns every single day. Admitting that no longer phases me. On my MacBook, I have innumerable spreadsheets and diagrams, process maps, and expectation benchmarks. I have random notes from books and obscure ideas that occurred unexpectedly. If I did not write them down, they may have escaped forever, and nobody wants that. The ravings of a neurotic introvert rarely make for great entertainment. What are those documents used for, I hear you ask? To run a company or manage a project? Well, something like that. Those things are certainly included. You see, I have timelines and routines for absolutely everything from morning habits and content strategies to life plans and cities I'd like to visit. I even have one overarching taxonomy that maps my ideal life, or at least a life, captured amid the torturous smog of psychological boiling point until 2065. If you want to book an appointment, I should be free for most of February that year. I have checklists of novels to read and brainstorms of potential articles for the next 30 years. I have mind maps of qualifications to attain and rankings of every street in Bromboro based on my ideal living criteria. I've abandoned social media content calendars and forgotten studies into the greatest baseball player who ever lived. There's no end to my planning, scheming, and worrying. Life cannot continue without this level of intricate care and foresight. God forbid something fell through the net. Why schedules don't work for me. More than anything else, I have obsessed over time, never having enough of it, wanting it to move too quickly, trying to fashion it from thin air. On so many occasions, I've attempted to quantify every minute of every day, breaking it down into associated tasks and orders of completion. Alarm, antidepressants, coffee, breakfast, writing, shower, clothes, work, It never ends. Also, it never works. In attempting to streamline my responsibilities and manage my time, I succeed only in stoking my anxieties and generating nonsensical pressure. After years of trying to hone a perfect routine, one that provides a sweet work-life balance and is filled with mindfulness, meditation, yoga, and exercise, I've given up on such a notion, or at least I would like to give up, if only OCD would allow such sacrilege. Trying to schedule life is logically redundant anyway. The clue is in the title, life. You never figure it out, and that is what makes it great. That is what makes it life. At the base of all my problems is a ferocious ambition. I want to achieve so much in so many spaces in so many ways that some kind of structure is needed to save me from going totally mad. There has to be an outlet for the ceaseless pipeline of potentiality. There has to be a hub around which the recurring chaos of creativity orbits. There has to be a plan. But when life becomes the plan, or more accurately becomes the planning, it is easy to fall into those familiar depths of despair. When you see that bus to meltdown city, sometimes you have to let it pass. Why January can be the hardest month for people with OCD. January can be the hardest month for those who struggle with OCD. Everyone has a new routine. All of your friends are on diets. Your partner wants to join the gym and cook avocado at any given opportunity. The new year, capitalized for ominous effect, brings an expectation of renewal. The calendar flips and we are suddenly expected to streamline everything and parse the rough edges of our existence for the benefit of everybody else. Sitting on the couch and pondering life is no longer optional. Get up, get up now. There are calories to burn and demons to beat. There's no time for idle thinking. Those who do not push themselves are inadequate. You have a half marathon to run in two months. January is a month of social rot obligation. 
And for those of us already brimming with obligation, largely self-constructed within the fragile mind, each drop of expectation water takes the emotional glass closer to overflowing. We have to eat less and exercise more. We have to buy new clothes and throw the old ones away. We have to make career plans and become vegan. Now, 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 change, change, change. The unbearable pressure of progress. Gary Vaynerchuk tells us that unless we are being locked out of Instagram every day for sending too many direct messages asking for opportunities, we are not trying hard enough. And so we pencil that into our hectic routines, perhaps just after breakfast or maybe slightly before. Neil Patel tells us that unless we are writing 15 articles per week about the most innocuous thing in our niche, our businesses will die. And so we add that to our routine as well, either just before bed or occasionally while eating our lunch. Our therapist tells us that unless we chill out and learn to relax, we will succumb to the meaninglessness of it all. And so we set aside eight minutes in which to enjoy that guided meditation class on YouTube, probably when we are on the toilet. Then we have dozens of other competing interests bidding for time and attention. Your accountant wants that spreadsheet. Your boss wants that report. Your mom just wants you to FaceTime her every once in a while. Is that really too much to ask? For the obsessive compulsive, life often becomes an exercise in completing things and honoring routines rather than feeling emotions and enjoying experiences. We become besotted with the means because we are petrified of the ends. Planning things and repeatedly executing against a brutal schedule is our way of feigning control over life, which is fundamentally uncontrollable. How schedules and routines impact our mental health. Hear that in tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled, Why Schedules and Routines Are Bad for My Mental Health by Ryan Ferguson of ryanferguson.co.uk. I'll tell you about Ryan, our newest author to join our ever-growing list. But first, a big thank you to Fit Forever. This is a company that I see growing in popularity every day. It's a health and fitness app that has helped thousands of people turn back the clock on their body, backed by the world's most prestigious doctors, professional athletes, surgeons, Olympic trainers, and physical therapists. Fit Forever basically took all of their expertise and got it into this app just for you. This is scientifically proven, medically backed fitness with members feeling improvements in their posture, flexibility, strength, and joint health, even in their first week. Take a quick assessment, get your fitness plan personalized to your body's unique needs and limitations, and you're set. The app will select a daily workout for you to help improve your body, mind, and mood in just 30 minutes a day. Now look, change comes with commitment. So commit to a plan that will completely transform how you look, feel, and live. Sign up today at fitforever.com for your free one-week trial. And exclusively for our listeners, Fit Forever is offering $10 off their yearly plan. That's $10 off when you use code OLD at checkout. And thank you to Ryan. He's a writer, author, blogger, and journalist. His mission? To share unorthodox stories for passion, not profit, furthering free speech, enhancing education, and challenging misconceptions through the written word. Nice to see that right there on his site. He had a nice email to us, and we checked out his blog, which is super clean and minimal, by the way. I love the look of it. Go check it out when you have a moment. It's ryanferguson.co.uk. That's linked in this episode's description, also at oldpodcast.com, of course. And he's writing more and more about mental health, productivity, and minimalism, so I'm sure I'll be bringing more of his content to you soon, besides tomorrow, of course. But again, please do come by his site to show him support. It would mean a lot. But that should do it for today. Thank you for being here and listening every day, including the weekends, and I will be back tomorrow to finish up this post from Ryan where your optimal life awaits.